Hello employees um, I've been wanting to make a video uh, sort of a tutorial video in the editor for a long while now and uh, I think this could really help both new and experienced players with understanding how to use all the different tools uh, that the editor of Levelhead offers because there are tons of tools that you can use to make your levels better now obviously I can't put everything in one video so I had to decide on something uh, very specific and small to focus about and I chose uh, a topic that in my opinion is very important and central uh, when creating a level and that is using cameras so Levelhead offers two main tools to control how the camera behaves in levels and these are the camera anchor and the zoomer uh, the camera anchor c can control where the camera is centered on, uh, which can be a specific tile uh, or a line of tiles, uh, and we will see that later. The zoomer can control obviously the zoom, uh, so it can be really close uh, to the player or to what's going on. It can also be very zoomed out or anything in between. And there are different ways to control each one of them and. Uh, uh, how they work. So it's gonna be a little counterintuitive compared to other maker games, but it also allows for uh, very fl flexible behaviors and diverse uh, types of camera movement. So I'm gonna start with uh, basically the, the, the maybe the simplest use case uh, of cameras, which is basically focusing on one specific room, so something like that. And let's say I want to focus on this room when GR18 enters it. So I can use the, the zoomer to sort of estimate uh, how large uh, the portion of the screen that's visible will be. So right here uh, seems good, it doesn't have to be perfect. And it's counterintuitive because the zoomer shows you how big it, it's going to be, but that's where you actually want to place your camera anchor because it's going to lock here. So I'm going to set both of them to the same channel. It doesn't matter where the zoomer here uh, is placed, by the way, because it just controls the zoom. And I'm going to use uh, this eye switch. Ideally, it's invisible and it's going to cover the entire room. Just like that. And it's going to send to the same channel of the camera anchor and the zoomer. Now when I try to play, I can enter the room and it's going to focus. It's a bit uncentered. I can't see the floor and the walls are not fully visible as well. So I'm just going to zoom out a bit more. That's the simplest way to fix that. So now when, when I try to enter, you, see, you can see uh, it's fairly, fairly zoomed uh, just about on the room. And the good thing is that I can also exit the room and it will return to normal behavior. So that's very good. Uh, and it's pretty smooth, the transition. So that's the simplest form of camera behavior that you can employ in your level. To scale it up a bit more in complexity, uh, let's try to, to make a grid of many rooms that are all near each other. So let's say we start in this room, and the camera is focused here, right? Uh, just like we've seen before. What we're going to do is replicate the same behavior for all rooms, each one is going to be on a different channel. And what I'm going to do is uh, use a separate channel for a zoom, because it's always going to be the same. So what most people do is use the, the last channel, 999, and set it to any inactive. That way the zoomer is always, uh, always going to zoom. Uh, on that size that you want. So then each room is gonna get its own camera anchor and its own eye switch. 
Alright, this seems good. So now we can try. And we can see. The camera will focus on, en on any room that we enter. And you may notice how in transition it goes a bit loose, I guess. Uh, it just seems weird. Uh, and that's why I like to include the doors. So, w when you have just one room, it doesn't matter, but with multiple rooms connected to each other, you want the cam the, the 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 eye switches to to include the the doors or the openings between each room because it creates a smoother transition. And let's try it now. So you can see, the transition is completely smooth, and the camera moves exactly uh, to the next room. A bit slow, um, but that's still pretty good. So, so sometimes when you fall, you're gonna fall past the camera, uh, but I think it's alright, and it's very good for most cases uh, of this certain type of camera behavior. Now. Sometimes, even if you zoom out as much as you can, like that, uh, it's not going to capture the entire room, or sometimes you just have uh, a very... Uh, like a long room, maybe a corridor or a shaft, uh, something like that. And that's the next case that I'm gonna, gonna try to show you. And I'm gonna set it to... Uh, vertical locking because then it will lock the camera vertically and it will move only horizontally I also want to adjust the, uh, the the eye switch to capture the entire room about here and as you can see one is not enough but I can just use multiple of them and it doesn't matter if they overlap um, because we can set this one to any active, then uh, the camera will be locked uh, vertically, no matter where we are in the corridor. So I can start here, and you can see the camera follows us, so that's a pretty good solution. Uh, but we do see the boundaries sort of don't work well, and for some reason here we also lose lose the camera, probably because we're not zoomed out enough. So that's better. And yeah, th also the other other side. The camera stops here because of the edge of the level. But we want it to stop uh, like here, right? So it means that when we're in this region, we want the camera to be stationary and we're gonna use that. Uh, we're gonna do that with a, with a second eye switch on channel 1 for example so let's try to figure out where exactly we want it to stop uh, and it's basically if we put the the zoomer here and it aligns with the wall roughly then then this is the area we want to capture So that's gonna stop here. So this way. Oh, we also don't want these to overlap. The the, the new the new eye switch with the old one. So that way, they don't overlap anymore. Oh, I see, okay. I forgot to set that to normal. So now when we start, the camera doesn't move. We can move however we want. But when we pass a certain point, it will start moving and of course it will again stop when we reach the wall. It won't go past it. If we have like... something else going on here, the player will never see it because the camera stops at the edge. So that's very good. And we can obviously do the same thing uh, for the other side. So let's try to do that. And again, we just need to think 
uh, about dividing the area into regions and then deciding how we want the camera to behave in each region. Now let's try running to the other side. And we can see the camera stops here, which is very good. That's exactly what we want. Now, sometimes uh, we may want some more complex shapes, uh, like if we want to have a corner here. So let's try to do that. What happens if, if, for example, there's a corner or sort of a turning, and the the corridor starts to to go upwards? So let's try to think of that. Obviously, uh, in this part, it's just like like the ending of a corridor. So you can you can again use a zoomer. Let's take one of these. You can again use a zoomer and measure where you want it to stop. So, for example, here, then uh, half of the zoomer area will be covered with a different eye switch and it's basically just the same as the other horizontal case but for corner uh, this corner it's a bit different um, because when the c w when the player is here we don't really want the camera to be locked right we want it to follow the player again and the idea is to cover only a quarter the quarter of the uh, the, the outer part of the corner so let's try to, re to reduce the detection area down to here. And then what I'm gonna do is add another eye switch to detect the vertical area. And it can go up to wherever you want. then use a, an extra camera anchor, this one will be locked horizontally, so the camera moves only up and down. And if we try that, we can see the camera will stop when you get to the corner, but then it will also follow us upwards, just like that. And this is... Uh, I guess this is not very common, it doesn't really work well here, in this area, uh, but it's still, it's good enough in my opinion, because usually you won't even need that sort of setup. What you will need very often though, is just one big area. Something like that, a huge room, and you want the camera to stop in the boundaries. So, the bottom is very similar and the corners are also very similar. But let's think about this region here. Sort of the, the center, when you're not close to any wall. Something like that. In this case, you want the camera to move freely. So we don't really need to worry about this area because the camera just follows the player. But we do need to worry about the edges, so let's uh, l let's tackle the floor, then the walls and the, the ceiling will be exactly the same. We're gonna decrease the detection area to only the bottom half of the zoom, uh, the zoom size. So in this case it's just the bottom half, and we, we have to do the same for this one too. And the same for this one, because it's like the other corner. And that's all the adjustment that's required, because... Now, if you're here, the camera uh, is bounded to the floor, but if you go higher, the camera will leave us and just... Uh, I'm sorry, the camera will leave the camera anchor and just follow us. And then we can return. Uh, just like that. So let's think what's going on here. The camera moves. That's because we didn't 
increase or uh, we didn't decrease this one to half the area of the zoom so it's only uh, like they have to get close to the wall and this camera behavior should give completely free mo movement and the player can only see what's in this room we can't see anything outside notice uh, this is not the size of the level this is this is much smaller than the level but we still can't see anything outside of the room uh, so that's very useful you can also create much more complex uh, shapes like th this is a rectangle this room uh, but you can create more complex shapes as well using the same technique of uh, dividing the room into regions and thinking how the camera should behave in that region. Now the last part that I wanna uh, showcase about cameras is autoscrollers. They are very common, uh, not everyone likes them but you should still know how to make good autoscrollers uh, because they can be a little annoying and complex to make depending on how you want how you want them to behave. The general idea is to have one path and this path will carry your camera anchor around. So let's say it's just normal locking style and let's say the floor it can be that simple. I would also love it to be a bit more zoomed out. So again, just use an extra channel and any inactive and very zoomed out. Alright. Now when we play, we can see... We can see the camera moves and we need to follow it. And that's pretty good. We can also, in some cases, set the locking to only horizontal. That way we can jump, uh, like if the, the other scholar needs to be higher, like go up and down, so th then it will still work. Let's, uh, let's make an example. Like that pyramid. So then the camera still follows us. And it, and it keeps out scrolling. So you can change the behavior uh, of the other scholar by editing path properties, like speed. Uh, for example, is one good property that you can control. You can also, for example, change the speed midway, which is very powerful. Uh, so let's say we could have, uh, again, use an eye switch to detect where the player is. And we could have this one very intense part of the level, maybe. So we can mark it using, using backdrops. And let's say this part is really intense, so when it's active, uh, we want it to be slower, so so the player has time to understand what's going on. So let's see what's happening. Now the camera moves really quickly. When we're here, it's gonna slow down, allow us to to allow us to be slower, but then it keeps going quickly, and you can add many inputs or uh, many triggers you can also completely stop the camera when you get to that area uh, by setting the inactive speed or uh, sorry the active speed to zero that way it's gonna auto scroll and completely stop sort of like a resting area maybe you can put your checkpoint and then when we exit it will keep auto scrolling that's very good uh, for giving the player their own pace in a way Another thing you can do... Uh, let's see, what can you do here? Sort of like a blobfish. And then this will become a Betty Eye Switch, maybe. Or even both, that would be a good idea, to have both. So then both are sending to the path, and the path will move uh, only when yeah when 
one of them at least is inactive. So the camera moves, when we get here it's gonna stop because both of the ice witches are active but then when we kill the blobfish it will keep moving so it's like a, like a, a task or something like that you know like you can create a, a camera that scrolls uh, through all, all, sort of, all, all sorts of different tasks that the player has to perform and you can add as many of these as you want or uh, maybe with some relays but that, that's not the topic So that was the end, uh, I really hope this can help uh, maybe improve the quality of some builds because the camera really uh, is really important when playing a level. So I hope this can help you build your levels in a better way. I also hope this can inspire more people to make sort of uh, video tutorials about the, the, the workshop because it's really one of the level strengths uh, over competitors and more people need to know about it. Uh, so I'm glad to be a part of that, uh, hopefully what will become a trend. Uh, if you have ideas for more topics that I could cover about uh, switches or paths or anything like that, uh, feel free to write them in the comments and I will do my best to, to read and take notes about what people want to see. Uh, but for this video, this is all I've got. I hope you enjoyed and you learned something new, and I really wish to see your levels that you make with it. See you next time.